Imagine a pipe so long it could stretch across the entire continent of Africa, from its northern tip to its southern edge, and still have enough pipe left over to cross a large ocean. This is the Nigeria-Morocco Mega Pipeline, a project so huge it is hard to even picture. This incredible undertaking will be about 7,000 kilometers long, which is like laying a pipe from London to New York City, and then continuing for another 1,500 kilometers. Much of it, around 5,660 kilometers, will run deep under the Atlantic Ocean. The pipe itself will be massive, with some parts as wide as 1.4 meters across. This giant will be able to move about 30 billion cubic meters of natural gas every year. To give a clear picture, that is enough gas to power over 40 million homes for a year. This whole project is expected to cost around 25 billion US dollars. It will connect Nigeria's rich gas fields to Morocco and then potentially to Europe, crossing through 13 countries along the West African coast. But how do engineers even begin to build something so enormous, stretching across land and onto the deepest parts of the ocean? The idea of a major gas pipeline from Nigeria to Europe is not new. It was first thought about way back in the 1970s. However, the specific plan for the Nigeria-Morocco pipeline truly began to take shape more recently. In 2016, Nigeria and Morocco officially agreed to work together on this huge project. The project gained momentum for several important reasons. Nigeria has massive amounts of natural gas, holding some of the biggest reserves in Africa. For a long time, much of this gas was wasted through flaring or not fully used due to a lack of infrastructure. Building this pipeline helps Nigeria sell its gas, bringing in much-needed money and helping its economy grow. At the same time, countries in Europe have been looking for new and reliable sources of gas, especially after recent events that changed gas supplies from other parts of the world. After the initial agreement, engineers and experts got to work. Between 2017 and 2019, they completed important studies to see if the pipeline was even possible and where the best route would be. It is worth noting that another pipeline idea, the Trans-Saharan Gas Pipeline, which would go through Niger and Algeria, was also considered. However, the Nigeria-Morocco pipeline was chosen because it is seen as a safer route, avoiding areas with more security concerns in the Sahel region. So, with the big plans in place, how exactly do engineers tackle the incredible task of building this mega pipeline across such diverse and challenging landscapes, especially when much of it is hidden deep beneath the ocean? The most challenging part of this project is the extensive underwater section, stretching for about 5,660 kilometers under the Atlantic Ocean. That is like laying a pipe longer than the entire coastline of West Africa. This section of the pipeline will go incredibly deep, reaching depths of up to 3,000 meters. To put that in perspective, that is deep enough to stack almost 10 Eiffel Towers on top of each other. The pipes themselves are made of strong steel, with a special company from China, Jingye Steel Group, providing the material. They are also covered with special coatings to protect them from the harsh ocean environment. The pipe's diameter, as mentioned, can be up to 1.4 meters wide. Laying pipes in such deep water requires adaptive engineering, where methods are tailored to the specific conditions. For shallower parts of the ocean, engineers use a method called S-lay. Imagine a giant ship that welds pipe sections together on its deck. As the ship moves forward, the pipe slowly slides off the back, curving downwards into the water like a giant S-shape before settling on the seabed. A long arm, called a stinger, helps guide the pipe and control its curve, preventing buckling as it is lowered. This method is efficient for less extreme depths. For the super deep parts, they use a method called J-lay. Here, the pipe leaves the ship almost straight down, like a fishing line dropping into the water, forming a J-shape only when it reaches the seabed. This method is slower because it typically involves welding in one position, but it puts less stress on the pipe, which is crucial when laying it thousands of meters deep. This reduced bending is beneficial for pipelines sensitive to fatigue, ensuring their long-term integrity in extreme conditions. 
Laying pipes in such deep water is incredibly difficult due to the extreme environment. The pipes must withstand immense pressure from the water, which can crush anything not built strong enough. The ocean floor can be uneven, with rocky areas and trenches, so engineers have to do detailed seabed surveys and sometimes even prepare the seabed by leveling it or removing obstacles. Strong ocean currents can also push the pipe around, making it hard to lay it straight and precisely. Also, the temperature of the gas inside the pipe will be much warmer than the cold, deep ocean water, and this difference in temperature needs careful management to prevent issues like thermal expansion or contraction. Engineers use special designs and materials to handle these challenges, like thick insulation and high-strength steel to ensure the pipeline's stability and prevent damage. Natural gas, like anything moving through a long pipe, slows down and loses pressure because of friction with the pipe walls and changes in elevation. To keep the gas flowing smoothly and quickly across thousands of kilometers, it needs a boost every now and then. That is where compressor stations come in. Think of compressor stations as giant booster rockets or powerful pumps for the gas. They take the gas that has lost some of its push, squeeze it to increase the pressure, and then send it on its way with renewed force. These stations use large engines, sometimes like those found in jet airplanes, to power the compressors. Along the entire 7,000-kilometer route, there will be about 13 of these compressor stations. They are typically placed about 113 kilometers apart. Imagine a gas station for the pipeline every 113 kilometers, giving the gas a big push to keep it moving towards its destination. These stations run day and night all year long to ensure a steady flow of gas. As gas moves through the pipeline, it is crucial to know exactly how much is flowing and what its quality is. This is the job of metering stations. Think of metering stations as a very precise cash register for the gas. They use special devices, like ultrasonic meters, to measure the exact amount of gas passing through. They also check the gas to make sure it meets certain quality standards before it is delivered to customers. This information is super important for figuring out how much gas is being delivered and for billing purposes. While much of the pipeline is underwater, significant parts will cross land, facing some of Africa's most challenging environments, scorching deserts, dense jungles, swampy areas, and even crossing rivers. In the desert, engineers battle extreme heat, which can affect the pipe's materials, and constant sandstorms that can cause wear and tear. The ground can be unstable, with shifting sand dunes. Solutions include using special pipe coatings that can handle high temperatures and resist abrasion from sand. Careful planning of the route helps avoid the most difficult areas, and measures are taken to prevent soil erosion, such as revegetation and silt fences. In jungles and swampy areas, the challenges are different. Dense vegetation needs to be managed carefully to protect the environment. Wet, unstable soils and frequent river crossings are common. Engineers often use a clever technique called horizontal directional drilling to go under rivers and sensitive areas instead of digging them up. This is like drilling a long tunnel underground for the pipe without disturbing the surface. Drainage systems are also built to prevent water from collecting around the pipe, which could lead to corrosion or instability. Across all land sections, engineers must conduct thorough studies of the soil and ground conditions to identify and mitigate potential risks. They also need to secure right-of-way which means getting legal permission to build across land owned by many different people and communities. This process involves careful negotiations and compliance with regulations. Finally, digging long trenches for the pipe and then carefully refilling them is a huge task that requires precise planning and execution to ensure stability and support for the pipeline. Building a project of this size comes with a massive price tag estimated at around 25 billion US dollars. This huge cost is not shouldered by just one country. Many international groups are helping to pay for it, including the United Arab Emirates (UAE), the European Investment Bank (EIB), the Islamic Development Bank (IDB), and the OPEC Fund. Nigeria's own oil company, NNPCL, is also investing a large sum about $12.5 billion, which is half of the estimated cost. This pipeline will not be built overnight. 
It is expected to be completed in different stages over a very long period, possibly taking 25 years. While some parts might start delivering gas as early as 2029, the full project is not expected to be finished until around 2046. The final big decision to start building is anticipated by the end of 2025, with initial construction phases in Morocco, Mauritania, and Senegal starting in mid-2025. Despite the grand vision, the project faces several significant challenges and worries. One big concern is security. A pipeline this long, crossing many countries, could be a target for groups that want to cause trouble, particularly in regions with existing security challenges. Protecting it will be a constant challenge requiring extensive cooperation among governments and private security firms. Finding all the money needed for such a huge project is also very difficult, especially in today's global economic climate. There are also concerns about the pipeline's impact on the environment, especially in coastal areas and sensitive ecosystems, requiring strict environmental impact assessments and mitigation strategies. Despite these challenges, the pipeline promises huge benefits. It will bring economic growth and create thousands of jobs across the participating countries. It will also provide energy access to about 400 million people in the countries it crosses, significantly enhancing energy supply in the region. For Nigeria, it means less wasted gas and more revenue, helping to diversify its economy away from oil dependence. For Africa, it means better energy connections, strengthened regional cooperation, and improved economic integration. And for Europe, it offers a new, important source of energy security, reducing dependence on other volatile regions. What do you think about this amazing project? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and do not forget to like this video and subscribe for more stories about the world's most incredible engineering feats.